You better find another. Find another? I worked with that boy for almost a year. You ain't got that long this time. Do you know how my brothers came by that money? They're gonna be in this town just as long as it takes for them to settle, one way or the other. Do you understand that, old man? Sure, Carl. You better. Buy me a candy apple. Sure, honey. Pop stock system for you. It's all talk. Maybe. Sure it is. Can't tell me a man can predict a gunfight with a book or a trick watch. Not natural. He's been doing it for a long time. I don't make it right. Makes no difference to him what happens to other men. Cost me ten dollars. Almost had me fooled, Leroy. I actually thought it was Billy Partland you were feeling sorry about. Well, it's not ten dollars. Of course I feel sorry for the kid. Getting mixed up with that old sharper. It's just too green, that's all. Come on. Since when isn't that the name of the game? Rush him, hustle him, keep him off balance, and shove him out in the street against Ike Brandon. Roston Ware. Find it works enough to make a man give up shaving. Maybe drinking, huh? <clears throat> Being as how the town's full of herds, wouldn't do to get all liquored up. Besides, we'll probably have us some work to do.
just have one for Billy. Same order as before. Shaw first, then Tories, and Yates. And good luck to all of you. And remember now, you can be quicker in a flash flood, but if you don't hit them feathers up there, all you'll take home from this shooting match is a pocket full of empty cartridge casings. <laughs> <laughs> well, go to it. I never thought I would make it this far, Rody. Uh, you're doing great. Don't get shaky now. Huh? Well, I'm not uh, shaky. <laughs> My hand is shaky, yeah. but I am perfectly calm. Dad, you're gonna be riding drag for the next ten drives. Let your gun come to a complete stop before you fire. Do some shooting. Hey, Marsh, this is Fred Holt. Runs Fade Store. Hey, hey Luke, watch this. This is Roddy Yates. He's a good one, too. Watch him. Two hits for Torres, and Yates up. shooting match, Rowdy Yates. Ah. Now, it's real gold, and it's got the name and the date of our fair city on it already. And Rowdy, if you care to, you can have your name put on it, too, unless you're going to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, I want you to remember the name of the man that put up this prize, Harry Simpson, down at the Nugget. He's down there waiting for you, and I thank you, and here you are. Look at that. Isn't that a beauty? Hey, I'll tell you what I do for you, Rowdy. I put your name on this watch. It says, Rowdy Yates from Ernie Torres. And I pay for it, too. Your name, too. Hey, I'd like to get in on that myself. Maybe Mr. Favor will when he gets back tomorrow. Me too, Mr. Rowdy, if they don't use my real first name. Rowdy Yates! You need more friends like custard needed Indians, but this pretty little girl here wanted me to introduce her. Well, hey, would you excuse us first? We're gonna be late to the Grease Pig Contest. I'm gonna enter old Mushy. Uh, when you're through there, drop by drops. Be my pleasure to buy you all a drink. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Pony. Uh -huh. I saw you. Very good. Thank you. I saw you, too, and I gotta say the same. Oh, oh, this here is uh, Ernie Torres. My name is Pop Stark. Stark. I heard the talk about engraving names on your watch. I think I might have a little idea for you. Uh, this was given me by one of my best friends. He's got his name on a fob here. Thought maybe your friends might like to get one like it for your watch. Buffalo Bill. Is that what it says? Says to my good friend and advisor, Thaddeus. Thaddeus. Thaddeus Stark. Hey, I've heard of him, Robert. William Cody, huh? He's yeah. very famous. Oh, well, so is Mr. Stark. I suppose so. Ooh, what kind of a watch is this? 
Well, Rowdy, I don't think our lady friend here would be very interested in this men's talk. She'd probably rather meet us down at Mr. Drum's saloon later. Then bring your friend. We'll see you soon, dear. <laughs> a fine girl. I have to see that you get better acquainted with her. Oh, definitely. <laughs> oh, you like my old watch, huh? Yeah. Well, tell me something. Does it uh, keep the time of day? <laughs> no, Rowdy. This is what they call a stopwatch. Now, this little knob here lets me start it and stop it whenever I want to. It measures time in fractions of a second. Why do you do that? I use it in my work. Here, let me show you. Now, let's see here. We've got Bill Hickok, Billy Body, Austin Ware, Wyatt Earp, and yes, sir, here we are, Rowdy Yates. I just made these notations. You see these figures here? Tells exactly how fast you are. I timed you with a stopwatch right here. Tells me which hand you use, the weight, the make, the barrel length of your gun, your mannerisms, your temperament, what kind of mistakes you're likely to make. Just about everything I'd need to know about you for now. Yeah, why write about me? That's a good question, son. It indicates modesty. Now, you come along. Let's go on down to the saloon. I'll tell you about it. I began noticing that every one of these small towns had its own gun slick. You know, not men with reputations, but local boys that were just a whisker faster than the others. And I'd see shooting matches like the one you fellas were in and be amazed at the amount of money that people were willing to gamble on. Yeah, well, I guess our boys had a few dollars riding on us, Ernie. Yeah. Now, they were more fortunate than most. Unless you pop Stark, it's never a sure thing. But I've got the knowledge, the experience, and the book. Here, let's have some peanuts. All right, I'll buy it. I guess I was the one. Oh, no, wait, it's on no, me. Come on, I got come it right on here. it's on. Got it right here. All right, all right, I won't argue with you. Here you go, boys. No, Rowdy, I can watch a man for five minutes, time him once or twice, tell you exactly what he's going to do in a match. I've been doing it almost all my life, and that's my boy. It takes us back some time, roughly, to Genesis Book One. <laughs> well, you'd be a tough man to bet against, Mr. Stark. Well, there's no need to when we can both be on the same side. Now, can you imagine the kind of money that we could pick up moving from place to place, taking on these small town gunnies? No, I can't say I could. With your speed, my boy, and my book, we can make $10,000 a year. What? Well, starts sounding a little interesting now, doesn't it? Or are you boys already making more than that? That's a lot of money. $10,000? I suppose when you're used to trail pay, that does sound like a lot of money. But then this calls for brains and ability. Almost any man can push cows, Rowdy. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. Not that there's anything wrong with driving cattle. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody. Now, let me, let me put it to you this way. If you fellas had your choice, which would you rather do? Ride point or ride drag? Oh, point. Point. Sure you would. Sure you would. It's yeah, study and dirty and dusty up there. I know about these things. Believe me, no man with the sense that the good Lord gave him would ride drag if he had a choice. But you take point. Yes, sir, there you are up in front of everything. The air is clean and you're in charge. You're a leader up there. May be more dangerous up in front of a spooky herd, but it's well worth it, isn't it? Oh, can't argue with that. Let's get us some cider and wash these peanuts down. I'll get it. Fred, a little cider, please. Oh, it's like... Anything you do in this life, Rowdy. Yeah, on the one hand, you have the men that are perfectly content getting up off the hard ground every morning before the sun comes up, eating white dust all day, maybe sleeping in the rain all night. There's some fellas that are actually happy doing that. Maybe that's all they're suited for. But I honestly believe that once in a while you run into a man whose life is wasted as a drover. This lad has what it takes to be a leader. He ought to be up there in front of the herd. I honestly think that he ought to have the opportunity to be governor or even president of this great land if he can make it. Roddy's already ramrod. Soon he'll have his own outfit. But I know what you say is true, Mr. Stark. Rowdy is better than to be drover always. We're all of us put here on this earth for a reason and a purpose. Would you agree to that? Uh, if a man has a good mind, and he's compassionate and understanding. It may be that he's meant to be a doctor. It would be selfish, actually, a crime against nature if such a man was wasted on a menial task. Am I right? Yeah, yeah I guess so. All right, you might laugh. You might laugh at what I'm going to tell you. 
but it's my opinion that this country needs heroes just as much as it needs governors or doctors or judges. If you look back through history, you'll find that it is full of strong, heroic men. They, they give the people somebody to look up to, something to hope for. Yes, sir, I believe you may be such a man, Rowdy. Hero? Yes, sir. Hey, maybe he's right. All the men in the outfit, they look up to you, Rowdy. Mr. Stark, just what are you selling anyway? Well, son, I suppose that I'm trying to sell you to yourself. You trying to tell me that if I traveled around from town to town to enter in these shooting contests, I'd be some sort of hero? I can tell it by nature you're a modest man, Rowdy Yates. So I know it's hard for you to accept, but let me ask you this. Would you consider Buffalo Bill Cody a hero? Yes. Yeah, sure I do. Fine. I'll tell you something else. You are faster with a handgun than Cody ever was. <laughs> oh, come on. It's all right here in the book. Time, dates, places, even the weather. When we get started, people are going to pay good money to see you handle that gun, and it'll be worth every penny of it. We'll give them a show, won't we, son? <laughs> You're talking like it's already decided. You know, I'm not too sure I want to be a hero just yet. You will. I'd bet everything I have on it. Didn't I promise to buy us a drink? What are we standing out here for? Trouble holding your table for you. It's gonna be a busy two days. Must be 20,000 head of cattle in town. We're not drinking. Oh? It's gonna be a working day, Austin. Take the bottle. Uh, I, I think I'll leave it. Uh, while you were at breakfast, I uh, went over to Dawson's. There was this big, loudmouth fellow there. He was wearing a gun tied down low. I asked Dawson about him, and as uh, near as we can figure, he just in with one of the herds. Trying to look like a gunny. I think I'd uh, probably be able to push him in. Just take care of him. All right. Um, say, Austin, I, I was doing some figuring. After we pay the room rent and uh, the saloon, we've got almost $90. Fine. I'm 42 years old, and I got $90. Excuse me, Leroy. I got half the $90. Boy, I had an idea I'd find in you. How you doing? Fine, fine. I'd like you meet a couple of friends of mine. Rowdy Yates, Ernie Torres. They just came in town. It's Leroy Mean. Hi. Leroy, uh, why don't you and me have a little game? All right. All right. Rowdy, you boys join that pretty girl we promised to meet in here. I'll be right with you. All right, please. Hey, I thought you forgot about me. Never. Show me your gold watch, you big, famous man. Why don't you put your name on it and give it to me to remember you by? Oh, sure, sure. Sorry, boss. Too bad about Billy. What you gonna do with yourself now? It's my surprise, you, Leroy. I think I'll stay away from gunfighting altogether. Oh, that does come as a surprise. I'm just getting too old to watch these youngsters come and go like that. And I'm not getting any younger myself. <laughs> you can take that youngster came in here with me. I was uh, going to ask you about it, Pop. Thought at first you'd already found yourself a new gun. Uh, nothing like that. Not so soon after Billy. Anyway, I don't think he'd have what it takes. It's a shame. Oh, he's willing enough, he says, but I don't know, Leroy. No experience. Uh, you ought to be able to help him get that. Uh, I mean, if you uh, weren't going to give it up. In time, maybe. In time. He looks, uh, looks young enough, Bob. 
Maybe you ought to take the time. I do I keep them away from hustlers like you long enough to grow up? <laughs> <laughs> Nice looking boy, Pop. Huh? Yeah. Never been in a shooting, you say, huh? No, he's just like all those trailed youngsters grew up shooting at bean cans and gophers. Oh, he thinks he's pretty good. He came right up to me, asked me what I could do for him. Came right up and asked you. And uh, probably heard of you somewhere. Probably. Suppose he knows about Billy Partman? Well, I hope not, Leroy. I hate to admit this, especially to you, but I was wrong about Billy. Didn't have it, huh? Oh, well, first couple of times he came up against boys in his own class, but I overmatched him with Ike Brannan. Well, it'd be just like putting Rowdy there up against Austin. I know what you mean. Spot this for me, Leroy. Yeah, at one time, uh, that's you said about Rowdy and Austin. One time that'd have been true, but uh, Pop, don't uh, talk it around. But Austin hasn't been feeling too good lately. He's uh, on the bottom. Still, probably better than most. I couldn't honestly say so. Mm. Not these days. <laughs> Hard to believe. Well, I'll tell you what. I'd hesitate to put money on him. Even, uh, even opposite that uh, young fellow of yours over there. <laughs> yeah, not much chance of that. Nice shot, little boy. Thanks. Would be kind of interesting, though. Wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Pop? Huh? Ah, come on, it's old friends. What do you really think? Oh, I don't know. I'd have to have pretty good odds. Austin's had 30 fights. Oh, Pop, you know better than that. Nine, maybe ten. Couldn't call them all real fights anyhow. I'd make it about ten to one. Ten to one? Pop, I always thought you were a pretty good handicapper. But you're uh, way out of line here. Looks more like uh, even money to me. Maybe uh, six to five. Shoot, Leroy, it wouldn't pay me to find a new boy at those prices. That's it. Fine boy. Five to one. Pop, that's just not good business. I'd have to be out of my head to give you odds like that. All right, Leroy, three to one. Now, that's it. Owe it to the boy to get him the best deal I can. Well, I'll have to have a talk to your boy. No need in that. He talks just like the rest of them. Then we walk into mine. Rowdy! Come here a minute, young fella. You look at her, uh, my watch. Okay, Roddy. Roddy? Pop here tells me you've had yourself a few gunfights. Now, Leroy. Uh, no, I've handled guns all my life. You see, Leroy, uh, Mr. Means thought he recognized you from Texas. Did you ever hear of uh, Austin Ware? Oh, sure, yeah, I've heard the name. Got quite a reputation, hasn't he? Yeah, as a gunfighter. Rowdy, boy, we're sorry to take you away from your friends. Now, you run on back over there. I'll join you in a moment. Right. Oh, that's beautiful. Let me see it. I can't. No, no one can touch it. So... Well, you kind of giving yourself a little edge there, aren't you, Leroy? <laughs> yeah, I had to find out. So? Three to one. What about money? That misfortune with Billy took most everything I had, but I'll see what I can do. I should say you'd be able to get enough side bets to make it worth your time, though. But, uh, when are you going to tell your boy? 
Leroy, there is no sense in making him nervous just yet. Now, I got a lot of things I got to do. I'll see you back here in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I found us some work. I saw you talking to Stark. The tall one with the girl and the Mexican. That's the one. We shouldn't have too much trouble. <laughs> I'm going to go get our money working. Be back in 10 minutes. Me. Yeah, I'm sure of that, huh? Besides, they're too old and they don't use perfume. And also, they probably will try to spend all of you money. Uh-oh. How about that, Ernie? <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you just stay here? Who's that fellow sitting over there behind you? Against the wall there? Keep staring over this way. That's Austin Will. He's a gunfighter. Yeah. Mm. It's Mr. Stark's book. Yeah, I know. I, I just wondered why he was staring at me. Is he a friend of yours? So-so. I don't think he's looking at me, though. He isn't. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> at least I don't owe him any money, fortunately. What do you think, Ernie? Uh, you think uh, we ought to stay around here? I, uh, I think so, yes. Looks like it's the only way I'm gonna get this watch back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how does Roddy get mixed up in these things? I wish Mr. Favor was here. Well, he ain't, so I hope Rowdy will listen to you. Me? You don't know Rowdy. He don't hold with being told what to do. It's got to come from somebody he has to listen to. Like the sheriff. Whole town's full of herds and cowboys, and the sheriff's out of town. Well, we'll have to do the best we can. The hotel. The sheriff sometimes holds up at the hotel when you don't want to be found. Good, you go get him and I'll go in. No, Roddy, no right off what I was up to. I'll go get the sheriff, you go on over to drums. Try room number five, second floor. Come in. There's gonna be trouble down at drums. Hey, come here. There's gonna be trouble down at drums. What kind? Oh, well, come on with me, I'll tell you on the way. Tell me here. It's always trouble. Sometimes it's worth getting up for, and sometimes it ain't. Well, there's gonna be a shooting. Yeah, a gunfight. So? You already know about it. Well, I'm the sheriff. Well, when are you gonna do something about it? You wanna do something? Go ahead. You got maybe 10 minutes. Take old Pop at least that long, dig up betting money. Not gonna be easy with his reputation. Already owes Carl Hatcher more than he can scrape up. You mean you're not gonna do anything about it? Sure I am. I'm going to sit right here and see it's run fair and square. Fair and... What kind of a sheriff are you? How will you know this new fella? Well enough, why? Relative? That why you're making so much of it? Oh, he works with our outfit. That fella Stark saw him at the shooting match. Rowdy won it. He won it? Yeah. He didn't tell me that. Changes things some. Let me ask you something. Don't it seem to you three to one is long odds against a kid can shoot that good? What? Clyde. Hey, Clyde. Hmm. Look, I changed my mind. Get over to drums and lay off ten on that kid. Hurry up now. We ain't got much time. Oh. And then, then maybe I will be a hero too. With ten thousand dollars. And then he watches. Mr. Stark, he can do these things. He has the book. Well, well you, you don't want to talk while we wait for Rowdy? Oh, sure. Sure we can talk. We'll talk about payday. You spend all or save them? Well, uh... How much trail wages do you have left? Good for you. You can afford to buy a lady a drink. Maybe two. Is Rowdy in here with you? He invited Roddy for a drink. That's Austin Ware. 
Tony. and everything's all right as long as they're just sitting and talking. You go busting in, you might uh, spook them. I don't know. I think I ought to break it up before it's too late. Believe me, Wish. Austin wears no saloon gun. He won't start anything in here. Now, now you come on with me to the bar. You can keep an eye on him from there. Come on now. Oh, since then, whenever I come to town, he has a bottle set aside for me. Hope you like it. How old is he? Yeah, tastes fine. Well, it ain't cut too much, and... Uh, wasn't still on the corn cob this morning. Was he talking to Pop Stark and Leroy? They putting something together, you think? No, is he a friend of yours, Leroy? Yeah, in a way. Well, anyway, we've known each other a long time. How do you happen to be talking to you? Oh, he's got, uh, he's got the idea I'm a gunfighter. How about that? What did you tell him? That I wasn't. As good answer as any. Is it true? Yeah. Yeah, why shouldn't it be? You don't come right out and say much, do you? Well, would you call me over to hear me say? Nothing. Just curious, I guess. Doesn't have anything to do with uh, that shooting match here in town, does it? It was a good one. Yeah, it was all right. I don't get out much to keep track of things like I used to. I spend most of my time in the hotel. Right here. You been up against anybody I know? How many of my old friends you outdraw so far? I like to keep track. You think you think I'm a gunfighter, too? Then you're not. No, I'm not. And I'm the Reverend Abernathy. Tell me, how many, uh, how many people ask you about all the shootings you've been in, Reverend? Pretty near everybody. I used to keep track once. Used to make a difference, I guess. 24 years ago. But not now, huh? I got no reason to want to remember. You know, a while back in uh, some other town, a lady came up to me and said, I shot her boy. In El Paso, two years ago, she said, and she, she's seen it. Well, I stopped to think, tried to remember Paso, and this kid came to mind. I could remember how he was dressed, the way he looked, everything. So I told her. She just looked at me and said, no, that wasn't the way he looked at all. Funny. Anyhow. Sometime later, I was sitting in a hotel with Leroy telling him about it and describing this kid that kept coming to my mind. He had light color eyes, too. Now, well, Leroy said I was thinking of Deanie Foster. Deanie Foster. It's the first man I ever killed. Now they all look like him. What are you doing with that shooting match? Just keeping your hand in? No, no. Several of us thought we'd give it a try. Win yourself a watch? Mm-hmm. Let's have a look. Slow. to wear one out. I'd need money or meet a pretty girl. Yeah, must have 15, 20. You any better at hanging on to him? Well, I've had that one a little over an hour, and I 
Still own it. I'd give that little girl you were talking to over there about <laughs> ten minutes more. And... What's the name of that fellow at the bar watching us? Wearing whiskers. Oh, oh that's a wishbone. He's our cook. No, I don't get a chance to talk to most of the fellows that I am. Uh... Well, I, I don't talk to many people. Yeah, well, I guess you can't really afford to let your guard down. You don't do it twice. Let me see your hand. Right. Just put it out, either one of them, don't matter. You're right-handed. Yeah, that's right. Notice the way you wear your gun. It's your right hand, there's your gun. Yeah. Most men sitting across the table from me wouldn't give me that much of an edge. Unless they were awful fast and awful sure. Oh. Well, I guess I got my answer. Oh, Leroy, what are you doing to me in my old age? Uh, you, <laughs> here, have, you better have a drink. No. I'm regretting a few already. Just part of the whole parcel. Hotel rooms, corner chairs and saloons, new faces. It was an old idea. A leather pouch for my hand. What happened? Gunfight? What else? You don't sound like you like it too much. Why don't you quit? There's a lot that's different about you, boy, but not your questions. Well, being as you didn't uh, call me over here to hear me ask a lot of questions. Why don't you just go ahead and tell me, huh? First, I'll tell you what you just asked me. You don't quit. Ever. Because they won't let you just walk away. The bone pickers won't. Bone pickers? Them. Pop Stark and Leroy and you. Me? There's only one way to best it. And it won't be easy. Both of us know how to handle a gun. And the worst thing that can happen is one of us gets his leg set. And them, they're satisfied. They've had their shooting. What are you talking about? I'm saying that when you and me go out into that street, we've got to agree that there'll be no shooting above the knees. Like so. Look, uh, Mr. Ware, you got the wrong man. Listen, boy, I know. Believe me, I know. Kids, lie down, everybody. I got something to say. As most of you already know, Austin Ware, Rowdy Yates, are calling each other out. Let me have you watch for the lab. My man, Rowdy, is ready right now. If everybody else is. The drover hadn't got a chance. Alan, bet for me. Now, we all know Austin Ware's reputation. So we all know what kind of pure nerve it takes to call him out. There's one thing in the world this boy mine's got. It is pure nerve. That's about all there is to it, gents. Wish them both luck. Find yourself places outside. <laughs> All right, Big Mouse, get out there and break this up right now. Somebody get rid of him. Stay out of this wish. Look, Mr. Stark, is this your idea, this shooting match? What are you saying, Roddy? You don't want to go through with it now? You know this isn't what we talked about. This is exactly what we were talking about, son. Are you telling me that you're afraid after all the talking you did? No, I'm not saying that, but... Good. Because I never for a minute picked you as yellow. Come on, son, you're going to be fine. Now, wait just a minute. Oh, 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 my You 
raise that money? Yeah, some. I bet it like you said. If you take this wash to Sonny Willis, he'll give you $50 for it. You put it with what you already have. If Rowdy's all right, I think I'll just skedaddle, Wish. Some of them might not take too kindly to my helping. Yeah, all right, Fred, you go on. Sorry, Rowdy. I didn't know what you was going to do, and I couldn't take any chances. So you weren't about to let me get out of it, would they, Wish? Bone pickers. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Thanks. Thanks, Wish. Mr. Favorite skinned me alive if I let you get shot up. You mind telling me what you hit me with? Yes, sir. It takes a brave man. Everybody wishes you luck, Ernie. You too, Austin. Gentlemen, bets are still on. Good, good. Who's the kid? Don't know. Came in second on a fast draw. Any bets? Look, Ernie, don't get stampeded into this thing. You're in way over your head. I am not scared. Now, just leave me alone. Eh? Listen to him, Ernie. Austin wears a professional. Look, this isn't a fair fight. You won't have one chance in ten. Fair? You, you think everything has to be fair. If it was, you, you think they let me try? One chance in ten, I take it. It is the only chance I have. It is important for me. You can't buy what you want with a gun? How do you know what I want? You would be very surprised if I tell you, because what I want is what you always have. I want men to trust me and to ask me questions how to do things. And, and, and to laugh when I say a joke. And to call me by my name. And I want women to sit and, and, and look at me. And I want some men to, to ask me to be a hero and to make $10,000. And I want to feel big enough inside not to need to be a hero. That is what I want. But I will settle for as much of that as I can get with this. Now, please, don't talk to me anymore. I'm not scared. I know you fellas mean well, but you're just getting nervous, and you don't want that, do you? That boy's got no business out on that street. There is nothing I can do to stop it now. Everybody's out there waiting. Well, if a killing's what they want, I'll oblige him right here. You don't mean that, son. I just give the people what they want. Yeah, well, what you're dealing in isn't yours to give, old man. Trust me. I guarantee you it'll turn out just the way it's supposed to. And don't be concerned about your friend. It's not just Ernie. Neither one of those men want to go out there. One's already seen too much killing, the other doesn't even know what it's all about. And I'm calling a halt to this thing Jake, right now. Jake! Keep that gun on him, Jake. Leroy, you and Austin go on outside. We'll be right with you. I tried to tell him. There's only one way to beat him. Sorry, Drover. Why weren't you around 24 years ago? Well, I'd say we're ready now, aren't we? I got nothing against you fellas, so don't start any trouble. You say when. One way to grease a wheel. How much you make in this place? Uh, I don't know exactly. Come on, come on, how much? Uh, besides, uh, I'd have to go work somewhere else. Come on, hurry up. Uh, no, I, I don't think so. The, the boss, you know, he... Oh, 
Was that really Austin Ware, like they said? And it was. Well, I ain't never seen anything like it. Well, it was almost like he let Ernie take the first shot. He was standing there just like it wasn't a gunfight at all. He never even went for his gun. That's right, he never did drill. <laughs> Darnest thing I ever saw. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pop! Pop, I bet it like you said. How could he lose? What went wrong? I don't know. Austin never made a move. What do you do now, Stock? We'll be talking about the next one. They always will. I'm getting out of here. See, son, aren't you sorry you didn't trust the old man? Would you like to hear something interesting, Ronnie? Do you know that if you invited Taurus out right now, do you know that most of these people would bet on him instead of you? It's incredible, isn't it? I mean, we know, in fact, that Taurus couldn't possibly beat you. Fortunes have been made in situations like these. I know, I've done it. It's all right here in the book. All right, be careful with that, son. That's very valuable information in there. Wait a minute, Charlie. Let me have it, son. Let, let me have that back. Son, let, let me have that back. Thank you.